Hello everybody, I'm going to Age of the Ring Cars. We have a 3v3 on Lebanon. Lebanon, more like living in my bar. Okay, bad joke. We started in the top left. We've got a Gondor. It is Nugget. This guy's a bit of a noob, although he may have uh, beat me on the uh, stream because I, you know, may have uh, fed a hero into a fortress. But we'll skip over that. We have a Nugget slowly plying his trade. We'll uh, see how he gets on as Gondor. His teammate is Elisar, excellent name, playing as Mordor. And to finish it all off, we have Excelsior guy. You know what, rush Orifin, Excelsior, or I'm never playing with you again. No, 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 he'll probably just go Vroomil, and he'll be lame, and we'll just do all this sort of stuff. Now he's playing Lorien. Opposite him, we have another Gondor, it is Pogmisha. I wish you played... I, I, I hope you play Battle for Middle Earth better than you play Elden Ring. Lamau, 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 he'll get that joke. And we have... Wait, Zero? Really? Really? I'm- This is what it's come to? I'm casting Z- Oh. Okay, well, we'll just skip over this guy. We have Zero as Isengard. And to finish it all off, we have Durin, your mom, as the mighty Woodland Realm with the mighty Woodman Start. Paying a whopping 400 for that Beyonding Lodge, and it is worth every penny. They are still good. I hope they do well. I hope I don't uh, get embarrassed after saying that. Uh, they should be good against Gondor. Uh, some Gondors will rush Pinneth Gellin. But on Lebanon, I don't see that happening. So I think Woodman's start is the correct start. Lots of creeping on this map. Lots of Lone Towers. We've got Faraday in the, um... In the Lone Tower there. Is he actually gonna get some kills? Oh, he killed... What the hell? Is he taking two shots to kill, uh... Or are they just stacked? No, maybe they were just stacked. There's no way a Ferrida takes two shots to kill a goblin. There's no way. But yeah, he I don't did we weren't seeing any like money dropping there. Does he not get the money if he's in a tower? That'd be kinda interesting. Alright. Drippin is out. Creeping is starting. Always a bit of a slow start on Lebanon. It's not like a Thillion. And I think the reason is for all these goblin lairs. But it's fine. Because creeping is good. Creeping means you get stronger units out faster, and that's what I like. So, double Spearman out for Excelsior. He remembered to build his forge, which I always forget to do. No archers? I wonder why not. Maybe he maybe he will go Orifin. Damn, I was just kidding. And when I play 3v3s as Mordor, I always start off with Orcs. Like, not many. Like, three. And then I might go early Catapult, or I might go uh, early Easterlings. And he's going with early Easterlings. Easterlings are always expensive. And they're slow. And I don't like Varag, so you always have to upgrade to get to the level 2. Um, so that's why I always start Orcs. Uh, just for a little bit. Um, with Mordor. I think if you want to use Orcs in the late game in a 3v3, it's Mogul Orcs and it's Gothmog. And uh, yeah, we've seen the power of them before. So double Woodman. Vineyard. Maybe he's going to get uh, Greenwoods later on, which would be nice. We, we see a lot of Sylvans. And I imagine Zero is just going to be the ultimate lamer. And so far, so good. Because, uh, yeah, he's got his uh, Wildman ready. And there it is. There was a time when people used to make forward bases on this map all the time. And I think just it, it, it backfired one too many times. And now people are always scared to do that now. It's always these little mounds that people fight on. And they are actually pretty fun to fight on. So that's fine by me. Uh, we've got Durin moving up the left. And then we've got Pogmisha, who wants to engage Excelsior in open combat against Lorien. With a bunch of fiefdoms. Pogmisha, you have balls as big as Thran's ass. Which he's gonna hate me for saying that now. Uh, Root Devil! Man. Uh, my, my VPN, man. Fuck. My fucking... My, my, my VPN, man. Man. That's all I've been hearing for the past week. But yeah, anyway. Let's see. There's no heroic statue. He's got double archers. I think Pogmisha just has to retreat here unless Zero wants to send some help. Yeah, if there was a heroic statue there or like a Forlong or something, then maybe he could uh, contest this. Early war chant. He pocked that early because he wanted to get Gondor's um, base in there too. He's got axe throwers. He's going to get the farm maybe, but because of the war chant, and I don't think uh, Excelsior went for that. Oh no, he did. He went for the uh, Elven Horn, but. He's going to retreat anyway because I guess he's outnumbered. And beautiful Axe Rose there getting some sweet kills. So Zero really 
uh, arriving right on cue there. Well done, Zero. And I think we've got Excelsior guy trying to interrupt here. I don't eat well the gold's gone. There's no point fighting. You're outnumbered. He's gonna pop the horn, he's gonna fight for this. Okay, this is the hill he's gonna die on. He's actually getting plus fours off the Ferida now, which is hilarious. Set it ablaze. There's a ping on the right. What do we got here? He's pinging, he's getting 2v1. I wait, what? Did he just completely miss the Elven horn? That wasn't even close. Also, why does Wolfgar have the Lorien badge under- Oh, no, that's, uh, the Pippin buff. Pippin's actually- Oh, okay, very nice. Also, that might be the fastest we've ever seen a Wolfgar come out. I'm not sure how Zero did that. He actually did build units. He did upgrade his, um, uh, Wildman Heart, but he's got Wolfgar out. Which is insane. What?! Are you out of your cotton pick in mind? Are you... Out? What? What? Okay, now I definitely hear Thran. Man, we devil! What, what the fuck, man? How does... Man, fucking hell, man. Like, so, like, like, what? Like, actually, what? I mean, he's got the crows hitting him now, which is actually kind of funny, because the wolf guy comes out, and he's already level 3. There's no tunnel for you to hide in, Caliborn. Okay, the fortress. You have to manually tell the fortress to hit those. And are they going to send help? Is he going to send help? Okay, there was one Eastling there. He got trampled by Wolfgar and his horse. Caliborn on half health. Crow is going to go down in a second. But Zero's barely lost any Wildman. Just completely demolished. Zero really just kicked in the front door. Because remember, Wolfgar's giving leadership to all these troops now. He could easily just kill anything that comes out of the barracks here. If Wolfgar decides to just chase down Caliborn, this could be the... Oh my god, this could be so bad. Oh my god, because Axaros are so good against heroes, and they got the damage boost for the for the uh, leadership. He could actually stun them all here with the tier 1, and then just let the fortress finish them off. Eastlings showed up, but somehow lost the fiefdoms. I'm not really sure how that works. Stun. You have to use your stun itself, so you have it. Come on, man. Stun. There it is. Maybe zero... No, he's not gonna... He's not gonna uh, fuck around and find out. No, Eastlings are actually gonna focus him here. We got a Nazgul here, which should tremble through all the... <gasps> Orphan is there! No, that's just another guy. It's a sentinel. False alarm, boys. Oh, man. I think he actually... I, I completely understand why he didn't risk his Celeborn fighting that Wolfgar. Particularly with so many Axe was in range. But I think he could have actually got him there. Because Eastling Archers were hitting him, albeit they're unupgraded, but... Celeborn will take a decent chunk out of his health. I think he could have actually got him. I think that was very, very... Very close. Okay, sorry, Durin. We have been neglecting you. Hey, just like the actual Durin. Uh, he's got Galleon strats. Very cool with the heal. Now, I meme on Galleon a lot. But that's only because no one makes him, and he's fucking stupid. But, Darwinian Red. 75% armor. Let's go. Level 3. It's so good. Renard's oh, gonna get cheeky trample here. Runs into some silver spears. Oh, okay, the... Seriously, Nazgul are like tissue paper to Spears. He barely touched two of them, and he died. Literally, that was amazing how quickly they die. I love it. It's so funny. Literally, that's why I don't make them. One false move, man. One false move, and they just fucking eat it. It's so hilarious. Anyway, fighting on heroic statue, Galleon. I think he's just sightseeing here against Axman of Lossanak. Level 5? I missed a shit show. There goes the Galleon heal. Is he level 3? Not yet. He is close, though. And the final heroic statue. Have they not won yet? Fallong's wounded. That's probably why he's not in the battle here. Darwinian Red. Oh, come on. Do it now. Do it now. Because the level 5, the armor will go through the roof. Okay, no. Eastlings are there. Okay, back off, man. Back off. But I love the Galleon opener. There's a, the biggest waste of Elven King's patience you will ever see, Durin. You did so well up until that point. Although Wolfgar is there to get the trample. Another Lurtz has come. Oh, sorry. Another Lurtz. Another Nazgul's come in. Ah, it wasn't a bit of a waste. There was more. Oh, sorry. There was Isengard en route there with the Danish. Danish? Fuck! I'm, I'm just going to stop speaking. Yeah, the Dalish. The, 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 they're not Dalish, Rude Devil. They're. They're done the ding. You know, I give up. Fuck it. I'm going to look over here now. Screw it. Okay. We've got Pogmisha going in with a Boromir. Dripping with his helmet. He do be dripping. More fiefdoms. I think you can take up to Arnorians now. Um, 
He can make a Thillions. Is Faramir on the field, or is it just the way the replays always show it? Well, if he is in there, I don't see him. But yeah, very uh, fast-paced game. Alright, Kelborn versus Boromir. Double heroic statue, so you take down one and it doesn't really matter. Lots of archers. Elvenhorn does go in. Pogmisha's fighting under quite a few debuffs there. There goes the Sentinel Summon from uh, Kelleborn. Amazing value. There goes the stun, and just watch these boys go. Barum is very tanky, but I hope pokmisha has gone for the heal. There it is. Okay, he's pocked the heal. No, I don't, it either missed Boromir or he just took an amazing amount of damage. Caliborn's still going in there. And he's just going to be cleaving these Tartan boys. Kill like four with one swing there, just like Madara in the Shinobi War. There's Naruto references for my boys out there, for the few weebs who remain. There we go. Alright, tier two now for zero. Tainted land, yep, you fucking tryharding, laming little bitch. He's just doing what everyone else does. Fruit Devil, be nicer to him. No! Axe on a Lost Act. Finally getting the Faradir out of the tower. And the Faradir doesn't even die. Level 5. Durin, your mom having a field day. I told you this Nugget guy is still playing his trade. Um, so it's not completely his fault, but level 5 Faradir is hilarious. Axe on a Lost Act. Do kill the uh, woodman there. Very nice. And I would say Mordor needs to hurry up and get the... Oh my god, they followed me home. Who remembers that Halo? Uh, that Halo? That level from Halo. Uh, what's it called? Floodgate, I think? They followed me home? Yeah, great level. Anyway, uh, yeah, he needs to get barbed arrows. So it's still level 2, needs to upgrade that. But he's been losing a lot of Easterlings to the same Dunlending Outrider. Uh, I think Pomisha got a pretty bloody nose there. We've got the Brothers Haldir out on the field as well. We're going to change it to uh, Lorien Cam. Because I'm sure my boy Excelsior has tier 2. Nope, he's one point away. Very close. Galathrim coming out now with some Path Stalkers. Now, you could do Cheeky Path Stalker. Um, you just get them level 2, you stealth them up. Take down level 3 resource buildings like they're uh, made of paper. Very, very handy and uh, tilts the enemy team like no tomorrow. So always fun. Second uh, Eastling encampment. Yeah, expensive but uh, necessary because these guys get made so slowly. And uh, a nice bulwark of buildings there. Marketplace up. Very nice. Another hero for Pogmisha. It is Fatimir. So now the Athelians can come in and start doing some serious damage. Horn of Gondor and then just start bursting everything down would work well for him. But he has to get level 4. Now fighting under Tainted Land. Nugget, if you're watching, never fight under Tainted Land. You will always retreat when necessary. we got Bjorn and Berserkers in the back line. Looking very bad for this guy. Galleon now. He's, he did pop the winning red. I'm not sure where he used it. Uh, it was used recently, so it might have been on the front line. Fold on does fall there. And Nugget getting double teamed here. Very unfair here, but then again, nothing is fair in uh, <laughs> Biffy games, let alone 3v3s. And there's the Huskala, the Huskal summon. And um, I think Nugget's about to get Nugget here. And Faramir actually survived more hits than I thought. Wolfgar taking his time. And he would have heard the cry. And there it is. Poor Nugget. He would. He was already outnumbered there, but yeah, fighting under Tainted Land, the resources, the damage buff. Yeah, very difficult. Okay, Excelsior, gonna try and make some strides here. Ain't nothing gonna slow him down. Oh no. He's got to keep on moving. Alright, Galathrim, look at that range just going. And now, Cunning Warrior. Briefly absorbs all damage because uh, we say so. And level 3. They've already popped their stealth. There goes the stun. He's gonna go for the quick hero kill. The, um... There's the sisters are there. And it was the Malon Shaft that just gets the kill at the end. Man, savage. You see that come in there? Damn. But yeah, the uh, I don't think he needed the uh, the sisters there. But uh, yeah, always uh, a guarantee. So that's two Faramers down inside 10 seconds. And Excelsior's doing well on his side, but I think just Nugget lost far too many units. He's going to have to... Uh, Hope Mordor can hold these guys off. Special ability now from Bjorning Berserkers. And what level is the Galleon now? Level 4. Hasn't leveled up much since that early blip, but it's fine because he's still getting the value. Penneth Galleon come in. They're going to have to cycle trample. They can't even kill Sylvans in a single trample. They're not really made for trampling, but... If you cycle them, they will get the kill in the end. Alright, uh, Elven Wood now. I think, because Pogmisha... Because he's been wrecking Pogmisha very hard, so yeah, I think what he's doing now is good. Because if he wipes, uh, maybe... Uh, I think Isengard might be might be difficult, but if he can just wipe all this, um, and sort of uh, try and reset the left-hand side here, 
where you lose an army, I lose an army, we'll just start again. Then it, uh, then it should level the playing field again. But I think he's going to get away here. The stun has already been used up. And this is why train abilities are so good, because they last. They, they linger, man. They fucking linger. It's like HPV. You just, they just, man, you just fucking, it just, uh, All the antibiotics in the world, you still get it. Alright, now. Because apparently, um, Zero just doesn't stop. He's got lumber mill after lumber mill. Tainted land, eco. Even the furnace in the middle. Forge blade, Saruman. And I guess he spotted that Isen uh, that Lauren had moved over. Wolfgar does get Malon shafted. There were plenty of uh, Galathrim still there, actually. I thought he moved everything over. The Outriders got uh, like a like a few units there, but yeah, he lost his hero for that. So well played Excelsior guy. Sort of carrying the top team here. He's gonna need some assistance. He's gonna need them to do something. Barbed arrows have been researched. Now you can get Mouth of Sauron for the uh, debuff and the tankiness on the front line. Um, you might as well get Gothmog as well. He gets a like a pretty good summon, and you can combo him with Morgul Orcs. And they will uh, trade pretty well against these uh, Dunlending Axemen. How they're going to stop Saruman is another question. Ugluk's on the field as well with Grima. I think, actually, I don't think Excelsior attacks the right-hand side. I think he has to combo in the middle. And they just focus all their heroes on the Isengard heroes. Bodkin arrows are there. Boromir on the front line. He hasn't got Honogondor yet. Celeborn actually tanking those arrows like a baller. That's the cunning warrior for you. I don't think he meant for him to come this way. He didn't mean for a lot of things to happen, Excelsior guy, but they happened anyway. Oh, but he's got the sisters in there. Level 4, the stealth was activated. Oh my day. Okay, they're not on Boromir. It's just going to lose. Wait, no, they've seen Faramir. Is he going to die again? Here comes the out, the Outriders, but Galathrim aren't going to care because Galathrim do. There goes Captain of Ithilien. And the Path Stalkers. Nope, they actually, their stealth has ended, and I don't think they can get the hero. Alright, let's go back to the top left. We've got Saruman here. Wizard Blast was used, but he's still leveled 1, so I'm guessing he fucking missed. Bob Darrow's gonna focus. Zero's actually gonna make a mistake here. Saruman goes down very nicely done. Tier 3 now. Okay, now a tier 3. Excelsior has to use it on the left-hand side. They need help. So many heroes here. Second Tainted Land comes in. Now, it's actually not gonna get all the kills because they're on Tainted Land. But surely the Eastlings are gonna finish that up now. We've got level 5s all over the place. Eric Pikeman doing what they do best in formation, and that is not die. Tier 3 now from doing your mom. Going straight into Linhir Spears. Not ideal, but he does have level 5. I think you can keep going here, boys. Level 5 Bjorning Berserkers. I think you can keep on going. No, Durid, you coward. You get back in there. And is that Pog Misha Trebuchet? All right. There's Freezing Rain. Your leadership says bye-bye. And now Thranduil's on the field. All right, there's still a lot of Easterlings here. And if the cavalry had gone into them rather than into the spearmen, then Mortar would basically have nothing left. Celeborn, level 6. He's donning his armor. The trebuchet. Not really going to get much range. There's not much support. Isengard had to pull back. Actually, he didn't pull back that far. He can keep going. So many level 5s. They managed to retain so many units. The one, only one who's really been just getting touched is uh, Pogmisha. But I think that's understandable because... I mean, Celeborn rush inside like a couple minutes. Plus Galathrim with heavy armor. It's always an uphill struggle. Even, even against unupgraded Galathrim, let alone uh, with heavy armor. Okay, now I think the bottom team can start making st um, siege. Let's see what he's got here. Some really epic battles so far, man. We've seen lots of heroes dying, some uh, some hero rushes, and some interesting strats. It's been very enjoyable so far. All right, now he's going to go for the upgraded archers. He's going to match those Easterlings with uh, Greenwood war uh, Greenwood archers. I'm not sure how they measure up though. I think the um, I think the power of barbed arrows is just too strong. But, uh, we'll see. Bit of a waste of the tier 3 there. Durin's been doing really well, but his powers have been a bit underwhelming. Alright, Celeborn going in again. Pops Cunning Warrior because it comes back so quickly. He does have the upgraded summon. So we can get Sword Wielding Sentinels. There's the cripple shot. And now every archer in Middle Earth will now be focusing Celeborn. But with Cunning Warrior... Wait, is he just stun locked here? Look at him! He's dancing! Look at him! What the fuck? Well, there's a Bjorn in Berserker playing Lumberjack with his face. Did he just die there? Because there were Bodkin arrows there. Is Did he die? Okay, well, Rumel's dead, but where the hell did Caliborn go? His body just disappeared. 
Literally just disappear. Okay, I think Kel- No, we're clicking on him. Where the hell is that- Wait, did he teleport him out? With Halder? Where the fuck did that guy go? There he is. Okay, I swear, he must have teleported him because he just went invisible or something. I don't, I don't know what that was. Uh, but yeah, anyway, they're pushing up the middle. Greenwoods with their uh, silver armor. Uruk's in formation with leadership behind them. Absolutely terrifying. We've got for Gondor and Horn of Gondor. And Galleon leading the line actually gets Bad Batch. A decent Star Wars show as well. But yeah, he even used Bad Batch, which explains why they're all going red and trying to hit each other. Level 5, uncontrollable Beyond Berserkers. He can't actually control them anymore. That's why they're running all over the place. I don't think he can control them. I'm pretty sure. They cannot be controlled for the duration. Well, the duration's over, and they find themselves in the middle of a Gondorian army. So much action going on here. The Huskull Summon comes in again. And so many heroes and buffs to the bottom team. They have Tainted Land whenever they want to use it. They use it here. Galathrim tried to mitigate that with um, Elven Wood. And there's so many leveled up troops from the bottom team. Galleon just going again. Mordor can't handle him. Galleon power supreme. The building berserker does die up there, unfortunately, but he does have one down here. They are level five. They're not going to die anytime soon. And I wonder if Zero is going to bother remaking or reviving Saruman. All right, well, Pogmish is going to go in now. Exalcy tried his best, but he's slightly wounded. Kelleborn is doing his best not to die. And the mist upgrade, so he can't see what he's got in there. But I feel like he knows he's ahead. And that's Boromir level 6. One more level, and he can start leveling up. Or start, uh... Shouting for Gondor until they level up. And I'm not sure why Durin is pulling back. Surely he can see Isengard is in the Mordor base. He's going to need cover. Or at the very least, assistance. But yeah, we've missed a lot of Galleon. We saw him kick ass in the beginning. But Durin somehow got to tier 4. And I feel like I... I'm, I'm, I mean, we, caught, we, we did see him use Bad Batch. But I haven't seen him use Dorwidian Red once. I've always missed the cast, and uh, it's annoying. Kelleborn going in again. Let me guess, Cunning Warrior? There it is, just absorb all damage. He does like how he does like to get stunned when he does that though, which is kind of funny. He can do the uh, oh no, he did the summon already. And I think he overestimated his abilities. If you want to heal, you're gonna have to make Idriel. And Boromir died chasing him. Well, if there's one consistent consistency for the top team, it's that Excelsior is able to <laughs> keep beating poor Pogmisha back into his base. And now Zero's here to put out the fires. I think this game is over. I think they're just so far ahead in, in spells and uh, hero levels. Um, I don't think Mordor's got much left. I mean, he's got a lot of Eastlings, but like eco-wise, he might be out of it. Does he have Slaves of None at least? Actually, we're close to tier 4, but I'll probably just go for a tier 3 because it's Lorien. And, um... Okay, he did get Saruman back on the field. Very nice. So he got heroes quickly and upgrades quickly. Zero knows something about Isengard that I definitely do not. And that is how to get good. Now, the upgrades for uh, Mirkwood are actually very expensive. They're 1500 But he does have... Oh, wow. Maybe that's how. A lot of lumber mills. That might be how. Okay, I think they're just going to go in again. I think Mordor's the easy target, I think. Um, Gondor's army is very weak, but he's got a lot of defenses. They just get in the way. You might get bogged down there. But I think they're... More than capable of uh, defeating their armies than marching on Mordor. For the next battle, we might actually... Really, Galleon, you're going to drink on the job? God damn it. But yeah, I think... Uh, we're going we're gonna to keep it on Galleon, Cam. We're going to try and uh, catch him use the mighty Darwinian Red. 
And I'm not sure what they're waiting for here. I think they can just go. I think it's, uh... Yeah, I, I actually couldn't tell you what they're waiting for here. Maybe they're gonna get some siege. Nope. He's actually past his CP limit. You can decommission things. I know people don't like to admit that that's a feature, but you can. Free up CP so you can make something else. In big team games like this, it is worth it. There's no point losing your army uh, because you didn't make siege. Okay, Merkwood moving up. Isengard. There goes the freezing rain. They're gonna pop all the abilities now. Tainted land. Oh, that's it. That's it. Game over. That's a death sentence. There goes the commander's hold. There goes War Chant. Saruman, Wizard Blast on the clump. They're debuffed. They're gonna get one shot for sure. And there it is. Fireball unlocked. Mordor attacking from the flank. They can't really do much. Trebuchet comes in. And there's the Huskull again. Darwinian Red did come in. That's what that big red aura is. 75% armor now. They do get a damage buff, a damage a reduction. But you can just mitigate that with, uh, you know, Forge Blades and another buff. There's Elven King's Patience. If they couldn't do anything before, well, they certainly can't do it now. And there was a lot of Spearman in there, so we've seen <laughs> slightly more successful charges. But you know what? I say that. That's a lot of dead archers. The Spearmen still live. And there goes the XP. Level 5, level 5. Orcish Medicine. I hope, uh... I, I don't think Orcish Medicine compares to Darwinian Red all that much. I don't think it has the same, uh, fruity aroma, but you never know. I've never tried Orcish Medicine, so there you go. And there it is. Kind of what we knew was gonna happen. Well, LSR... Oh, hold on. Hold on. Not if something I say. Excelsior's Yoda moment coming in. That's a lot of level 5. Remember, they are debuffed in there. The heroes are there as well. And they can't save the fortress. And in fact, I think we might actually see the end of Celeborn here. Oh my god, there goes the horn. Galathrium are probably actually going to get die here. Holy shit, we actually saw Galathrium get deleted. All it took was a tier 4. And even then, even then some of them still lived. And icing on the cake, very literally, on the uh, few remaining Eastlings. That's basically GG. They're going to try and siege down this Gondor player. No, they're not. He's just going to commit Sudoku, and there we go. Wow, that was... I mean, that was a bit one-sided on that left-hand side, but don't take anything away from Durin. To do so well with uh, Galleon and show off the power of his armor buff, and uh, credit to Zero, of all people, for... <laughs> for, you know, actually going into uh, Urukai as well, and for getting heroes out just so ridiculously quickly. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure how Excelsior got Celeborn out there. That was <laughs> that was weird. I'm not sure how he did that. Anyway, I hope you guys all enjoyed. That was a pretty epic game. And uh, be sure to like or hit that like button if you haven't already. And leave a comment so I can make fun of you and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you all next time. Peace out. Goodbye.